of that day. I want to come to Friday having taken care of my business in such a way that I can truly rest. Amen. Physically and mentally, you always have the Sabbath on your mind. If I take on too much, I'll be too tired. Amen. Ah, you know this. Ah, you know this. Let me stop. Let me stop. We need to make a commitment to be better Sabbath keepers. By God's grace. We first apologize to God for the many years we've, yes. tell, we've destroyed the self. We've kept the day, not a principle. God has just given the day to express a principle. Originally, there were no days. So the day is not an absolute necessity, but we will have it for all eternity. So we thank God for that. Amen. But even with the day, let's rise higher. Amen. Let's live on the level of the principle. When you depend, you know what the person says. Mm -hmm. If I depend on him for right, I have to wait for him. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. So when you depend on God, you wait on the Lord. And to wait on the Lord is to obey Amen. God. Amen. You know, Sabbath keeper, I want you to think of becoming one. Obey God. When you keep a Sabbath the way it should be kept, you recognize God as the provider. The creator, the sustainer. And I sometimes like to illustrate, come with a Christian, let me illustrate something that I pray and let my friends go. You see, during the week, stay right over there. Let's say, stay right over there, Christian. Face me, face me. Have a nice man, face me all right. <laughs> now that's Sunday, okay? That's Sunday. Cameraman, I'm just moving a little. That's Sunday. Now take a small step forward. That's Monday. Now let's say, this is God right here, not me, but this is God right here, okay? That's God right here. A Christian is working, has a big job, has a car, nice house, membership in the country club. He has a boat, right. he has a plane, you know, he big bank account. So he's working and he's in a big shop. So here's Tuesday, take another step. That's Tuesday. Another step, that's Wednesday. Where's in his mind, where's he moving? Sabbath. No, no, this, I said this is God, this is Christian. Where is he moving? Yeah, he's, he's thinking that he's doing what? Taking care of himself, the only God can do. So he's thinking that he's God. He's moving towards royal thinking, which is, is not this the life I have lived? Oh, yes. I went to school. I got the PhD. Take another step. And so by the third step, this is third, this is Friday. By the time Friday comes and the Sabbath comes, the Sabbath now is God's hand in your chest. Did that hurt? God's hand in your chest, which says what? Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up! You're not God. Remember! It is because of me that you're where you are. Don't get out of your place. The Sabbath keeps you in your place. Amen. Amen. But first, the Sabbath helps you to keep God in his place, which is the provider, the ruler, the sustainer. And the more clearly you understand God's place, the more clearly you understand your place, and you don't step out of it. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar stepped out of his place. It's not great battle I have built, and God had to put him back. When God puts you back in your place, it's never pretty. Thank you. But he's given us the principle, thank you for the Christian, that we may stay in our place seven days a week. I want to ask God to forgive me for the many times I destroyed his Sabbath. Broke it. One of my prayers has been for the past few years, Lord, give me humility. No, I choose humility. Loneliness, meekness, and a sense of nothingness. That's what I want. That's what I choose by God's grace every day. Yeah, I don't want God to put me in my place. So I said, Father, you just give me strength. I'll keep myself in my place. It is less painful. And that's God's will. That's why he says, humble yourself. And I want him to forgive me for the many times I violated the Sabbath, broken it, destroyed it, embarrassed him. I want him to forgive me right now. And help me to not only keep it, but preach it. Amen. And call others. Observe the sweet, lovely Sabbath given to us by Christ, whom we love so much, so we say. That same person on that cross gave us the Sabbath principle. Amen. It wasn't Sunday, it was the Sabbath day. Amen. How many of you will say, Father, help me day by day. 
to live by the Sabbath principle. Can I see your right hand? Stand up with me. Stand up with me. God bless you. Stand up with me. It's now 17, 16 after 8. Sorry for going so far beyond it. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you, dear God. You are the great God, but you stoop so low because you love us. And in the person of your Son, you came to us. Because Christ in his life demonstrated your character. We thank you for the constancy with which you preserve us even in our rebellious states. When we think we rule our own lives and we provide for ourselves, not remembering it is you who give us power to get wealth. It is you who keep us living and alive. It is you who sustain and provide for us. Ah, Lord, forgive us for the many times our thinking has been royal but disastrously wrong. Like Nebuchadnezzar, we've said, is this not the great life that I have built? Is this not the fancy education I have acquired? Is not this the great reputation I have built? Oh God, before you put us in our place, we repent. Yes, yes. And we thank you that it is your brain, the brain you've given to us, that enables us to get that education. And the power you've given us to work enables us to buy whatever we've bought. And every penny we have belongs to you, dear yes, God. Yes. Help us to remember that so it may keep us in our place. Help us to remember seven days a week we must live by the Sabbath principle which is I am dependent upon God. Yeah. Father, let this message remain in our hearts. Bring us back tomorrow, we pray. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, Amen. 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 Travel safely, come back tomorrow, and bring someone with you, please.